Hello, welcome to the newspaper review. My name is William Sabwile and if this is the first time you're seeing this video, this is where we'll be bringing you the headlines across newspapers around Nigeria. And we get to analyze these headlines here on the program. And with me to do that today is Natasha Brown. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for making it on the program. And of course, with you also, our viewers, to do that, you need to first subscribe to this channel by clicking on the subscribe key. Don't forget to also turn on your notification key. That helps you get notified whenever we come up with a new episode of the program. All right, let's get into the headlines for today. All right, we'll start with the Vanguard newspaper for today, the 15th day of uh, June 2022. And as uh, the headlines here, uh, we'll start from the top. It says, uh, APC primary, Buhari takes decision without Cabal's input. Presidency, speaking there. Also, we'll take this one. It says, VP slot, PDP committee picks Wiki. Tinubu will decide, says Imo governor. How 13 of 17 PDP committee members chose Wiki will name running mate in 48 hours. Are you? Tinubu, not APC governors. Uh, Tinibu, not APC governors, will choose running mate. Uzodima speaking there. Muslim, Muslim ticket, bad for peace. Unity, Catholic secretary speaking there. Also, other headlines here on the Vanguard News. We see while federal government should remove fuel subsidies. Soludo speaking there. And that story is on page 26 of the Vanguard newspaper. And then lastly, I'll take this one and say World Bank focused. Nigeria's public debt to hit 36% of GDP. That is on page 8 of the Vanguard newspaper. All right, Mr. Tasha, let's go to the major headline here. It says, we're talking about the VP slot. It says, VP slot, PDP committee picks Wiki. Tinubu will decide, says Governor, uh, Imo Governor speaking there. It says, uh, Tinubu will decide who his VP will be. So, for the VP slot, what do you think about Wiki being the, uh, you know, most preferred candidate for the PDP? Um, I, I would say that actually did see it coming um, mm. because if you look at um, the people that were being contemplated for, yeah. you look at Okowa, Governor Okowa, you yeah. look at Saraki, you look mm. at Wiki, I think um, basically the PDP were looking at the one with the most um, popularity, the one with the most um, people and um, familiarity yeah. so that they can be able to have a better handle to clinching the ticket yeah. or the, the presidential um, position. Yeah. So um, I actually did see that coming. Um, so for the council to have picked him, first of all, we know that Wiki has been one of the most vocal governors. Yeah in this um this whole um period and um, we also know he has, he's been called mr project he has been able to set some infrastructure so to a large extent um a lot of nigerians have accepted him or not necessarily accepted him because they still have issues with the way he goes about speaking yeah. you know but <laughs> they, they've accepted him for who he is based on how bold he is to be able to make certain decisions mm. such as you know the tax um, that, that he had to call back yeah. to say that it has to be um, reverse owned. We're not remitting to the federal yeah. um, anymore. So he has done a few things back here in the South and we, we, cannot, we cannot contest the fact that he's really popular. So, and based on the rumors that, you know, P, um, APC mm. would probably be tilting toward the Muslim Muslim ticket, mm. this is also not a bad deal for the PDP yeah. um, because Wike is, is started to be um, a Christian, yeah. so to speak. That's his religion so Muslim Christian ticket it kind of appeals to both parties mm -hmm. and you know the north the south so I think I think it was um, quite an intelligent decision even though a lot of people are thinking that um, based on his character the way that he speaks would he really be a good fit for the office but um, only time will tell yeah so for me I'd say that I, I saw that coming you yeah know? interesting and for me I, I think you know there's been a call from here and there I saw one of the reports a day or two ago where um, Murik, a Muslim association mm. somewhere in Lagos, is calling uh, or advising the PDP or Atiku not to pick Wiki as their VP uh, candidate. But against all of that, he has, you know, come up tops as uh, in, in the, the preferred yes, candidate. Yes, as a preferred mm. one. And yes, like you rightly said, he has been out there. And, you know, in, in this game of politics, uh, it's a game of popularity. And a game of numbers, and if Atiku is 
you know, seemingly popular in the north and well known out there. Wiki, right here in the southeast and south south, you know, he's that man, very popular out here because of his um, um, very vocal nature. He talks, he's very bold. He has been so bold enough to, you know, contest certain rights from the federal government and he has won in all those cases, the VAT case and all of those things. So, yes, I mean, it was a very smart choice for them to have picked him here. And uh, we're hoping that Nigerians, you know, uh, will also see it in that light in this very, very serious contest where we also have Peter Obi of the Labour Party oh, yes. making a lot of rounds. You know, a lot of Nigerians are looking at that angle and say, oh, Peter Obi is our saviour. And some other persons don't agree to that. But uh, it's beginning to look uh, more interesting uh, with Bola Tinubu there. You see Wiki here and then the Labour Party. It's going to be an interesting I, one I'm next year. I'm telling you this time. Because <laughs> right now, you know how Peter Obi has, so far, he has gained a lot of popularity, yeah. especially with the Nigerian youth. Mm -hmm. But immediately today, I know that coming, co um, coming down here, you mm. know, to, uh, as an analyst, I overheard people already saying, okay, even though they did prefer um, Peter Obi, mm. but now they're going to move over <laughs> to Wike. You see, because, that, you know, thing. based on the fact that they're South-South and all of that. So there is going to be all that all that tussle um, for people, mm. you know, to actually come through voting. But but I, I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's I interesting. like what I'm saying. And I love the fact that PD this time are really very much very very strategic about how they are ticking their boxes unlike other times this time they really want to get it right so they are beginning to you know analyze the body language of Nigerians and beginning to tick these boxes I mean we care here in the south will definitely Deliver. divide the votes uh, between the Labour Party and uh, uh, um, any other party yeah. I mean I mean if Wike is coming from the south, who, he has his followers here. He has his very strongholds here in the south south. So if Labour Party it, it was really banking on getting all the votes here in the south, well, man, that's it's no going longer to be the really case. Divided. Yeah, it's, not, it's not going to be the case anymore. All right, let's move on to other papers, and this time we'll go to Daily Trust newspaper. And the headlines there from the top it says how Abuja farmer was killed, dumped inside well by his workers. That's a very sad one, and the story, that story is on page 16 of the Daily uh, Trust newspaper. Also, we see here, inflation will push additional 1 million Nigerians into poverty by end of 2022. World Bank speaking there. And, of course, the big headline here on the Daily Trust newspaper is the same as the previous one. It says, two days to INEX deadline, Wike wins PDP advisory council poll as running mate. Uh, Tinubu will choose his VP, Uzodimma, speaking. APC governor's mom after meeting Buhari. President takes uh, decision without cabal. Garibashe was speaking there. We are not in alliance talks, NNPP. All right. Natasha, one story caught my attention, and that one will be inflation will push additional 1 million Nigerians into poverty by end of 2022. World Bank. I mean... Looking at the situation of Nigeria, I know that we're already neck deep in, I don't know, many crises, including poverty as one of the very major ones. What's your take in this World Bank's projection? It says, you know, we'll further dip in, you know, into the poverty mark by the end of 2022. It is, it is a horrible thing to see. But even though, um, mm. let's not also forget that this inflation is felt all over the world. Yes. The U.S. is complaining of inflation. Gas prices are way up. Yes. Even in the U.K., unemployment rate right now in the U.K. As, as at when I um, watched um, you know, BBC earlier today, it was about... Um, they said one million out of jobs or mm. more and more to come. So there is unemployment almost everywhere right now mm -hmm. um and let's not forget this is like an aftermath of the covid yes. covid shut down a lot of businesses mm -hmm. and a lot of shops closed up mm -hmm. so now people are saying you know the federal government should create more jobs to get more employment but even the federal government has been hard hit. We see the crisis going on with um, Russia and Ukraine. That has also hit a lot of world economies. Yeah. So um, um, it's not like we do not see this coming. First of all, we already know mm. that there is already poverty in the land. There is high unemployment rate. Then add that to the, to the post-COVID period. And yeah. with this ongoing war, it's going to be a whole lot. So it, it's something that is not unforeseen, but we only um, would desire that um, our government 
would create avenues that can be able to help even SMEs, you know, um, um, entrepreneurs, grants, whatever um, ways that they can be able to, so that they can be able to employ more people. Mm. Because at the end of the day, the federal government cannot employ almost everybody. Yeah into all the ministries so but at least if we had an enabling environment look at insecurity going on all yes, over the that, place that will, oh. so even foreign investment yes. will be hard to come by yes. so if at least the federal government can be able to set certain things in place for example set our security in place set our power in place right now um, um last i heard a few days ago the we are at nine grid. megawatt our national grid actually collapsed, collapsed again <laughs> yes so for the fifth like, time in in a year so yeah. We are saying that there is going to be poverty. Yes, mm. it will come because businesses cannot keep up. People do not have the buying power or mm. the purchasing power to even be able to purchase goods. Now, the other day um, that yeah. I, I, I went to the supermarket, pig milk right now is 4,000 euro. Yeah. So it, it is a lot going on. And if, if certain measures are not put in place, which unfortunately this particular government has not been able to help agree, us with, yeah. um, it, I, World Bank is only maybe even, um, what, what's the word? World Bank is probably even undermining it. It might yeah. even be more than that. I totally it might agree. Be more than that. And with the upcoming election, most of our government officials are focused on how they are going to get back into power in 2023. So this whole projection is just going to be a projection in futility because nobody is going to pay attention to this now. Uh, we're just hoping that, you know, businesses will be able to keep up. Uh, you know, while this is on, because and, but it's really tough. It's tough for it's businesses tough to yeah. even keep it's up. A tough one. Imagine if you had to run diesel the whole of the day. And then, you know, in one of the reports, we see that diesel price may get up to a thousand five hundred naira at the end how, of this year. How much are you remitting to be able to keep up with that? I mean, that's 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 the most outrageous price diesel we have to get to a thousand five hundred naira per liter. So how would businesses keep up? Even the so-called banks, even the federal uh, settles, the offices or facilities run by federal government, how are they going to keep up? I mean, these are questions that we need answers for. 1,500 naira, that is the all-time high. My God, that's too much. And, and for me, even um, right now, we already know that the federal government, as at now, they're already having a lackadaisical attitude toward the economy, towards power, towards security. They're feeling pretty loud. They're all lax focused on 2023. Because, so, I, I, for me, what, what I'm not even really looking at this present federal government anymore. I am saying that for whoever is going to be competing, the articles, the tenables, the wiki, I am for um, us having a proper interview process. Mm. Where tell us solutions we want to know that you can be able to deliver mm. especially with the power and security um, and um, the power sector and then with insecurity mm. we need to be able to know that you have plans to push these things um, 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 progressively so for for the populace so, i mean at the end of the day I, I just hope that we're able to get that access to hear these people speak because yeah. right now I've lost all hope with the present government. True, I, I true. don't think they even have solutions. Yeah, our economy is in a very tough place. And uh, just like we said, we hope that our government will really, really do something about it and on time too so yeah. that we don't head to a total collapse. All right, moving on, we'll go to the Punch newspaper with the headlines there. And uh, we'll start at the, from the top part of that paper here. It says, All War Massacre. Southwest governors to rejig security. Lawmakers demand attackers arrest. Southwest won't tolerate another attack, says Akari Dolu. Three governors donate 75 million naira. Will put security agencies under fire until they arrest killers. Reps speaking there. And we also see here, we see dollar rises by 21%. FX shortage persists after party primaries. That is on page 19 of the punch newspaper All right moving on we'll go to the headliner on the punch newspaper it says muslim muslim ticket khan orders one parties as buhari meets governors pdp names articles vp thursday that story is on page two and right under that story we also see muslim muslim ticket dangerous declaration of war khan wants parties vows stiff persistence what matters is responsive, responsible government. Hunger knows no religion, Tinubu's group speaking. Constitution doesn't stipulate religion as a criterion for choosing VP, says Governor Uzadima. 
All right. Also, at the very bottom part of uh, uh, the punch newspaper, we see here 31 policemen dismiss orders sanctioned over 14,976 complaints. And also, we see this one diesel price may hit 1,500 uh, naira per liter. 75% filling stations closed. Market are speaking there, and that story is on page uh, 17 of the Punch newspaper. Natasha, that's what I was talking about. 1,500 naira per liter. Plus the fact that there has been a looming strike that has been making the rounds. In fact, some in Abuja, they already experienced a strike. And some areas in Lagos, they are beginning to say, okay, the lines are beginning to build up. What is going on? What do you think is really happening in our petroleum sector? Are we supposed to be experiencing strikes, um, you know, shortages, fuel shortages at this time? It almost feels like it is a come to stay thing with the petroleum sector whereby every mm. other year if we do not go on a strike mm. once in a year then um, so <laughs> something is not yeah, right. Yeah, it's true. It seems like a recurring thing. It means that certain people are not doing their jobs. It means that certain people are not are not progressive in their thinking on how to be able to um, properly provide this um, 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 necessities um, to the populace because at the end of the day there has been the whole fuel subsidy talk or oh, let's take off fuel subsidy no let's put back fuel subsidy it's been a back and forth back and forth it's either the petroleum um, NMPC they're shouting or or the populace is shouting so at the end of the day um, if, if we even listen to excuses they would say oh because of you know the whole Russian Ukraine war mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, um, so at the at the end of the day, we we it, it almost feels like these things have come to stay because you know um, one of the arguments that was put out by some government official was that in other countries mm -hmm. they pay premium for gas. <laughs> You know, so, we so that, that we that we are paying, you know, very little oh, yeah. um, um, pertaining to that. And at the end of the day, we know that our refining sector is also a mess. Yes. So that can also be a defining factor as to why there would always be increment, you know, with our gas products. But at the end of the day, we just hope um, that um, the petroleum sector can be able to do um, right by us yeah. and, you know, um, help in any way that they can because right now I, I'm even right here we use diesel yeah you know I, it, 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 mm. it is tough yeah it, it it's is. a tough thing it so and the price if it really gets to that uh, price it, it's, it's going to be really it's going to be and tough I, and I think it's, they are going to get a backlash and for a country like Nigeria uh, with over 200 million uh, persons in Nigeria and this kind of thing is happening the government is not speaking to us about what the situation is and looking at the fact that we do not have good power sector in nigeria diesel or petrol petroleum products are like the heart of many businesses since there's no power people generate power by themselves and this is one major way that nigerians generate power and if you now say the price is beginning to get over the rooftop then it, it just clearly shows that what even the World Bank is projecting about inflation rates, it's, it's, it's even closer than we think. And because diesel price hike up, gas prices hike up, uh, also cost of products will hike everything. up, cost of production hikes up, manufacturing Food hikes price, up. Everything will go so, up. So that's where we are. I mean, and I don't know why a government can be so irresponsible that these things keep happening and there's no final stop to it. And no explanation whatsoever. Nobody's talking about it. We are just seeing it on the report. And no, no, no. I mean, it's really sad. It's really unfortunate. And these are some of the issues that we are hoping that will be addressed even before 2023. But most especially, we're hoping that, you know, a lot of Nigerians are very optimistic that, okay, the next, you know, uh, a set of government that will come in will really cause a serious change and we're hoping that that will be the case in 2023. And that's why we're advising every of our viewers Please get your PVC so that we can decide a better Nigeria for all of us. Well, that's all we're doing today. I want to thank you very much, thank Natasha, you. for thank being you. on the program. And to our viewers, thank you so much for staying with us up to this time. Don't forget that you can only stay connected if you subscribe to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and also turning on your notification, notification key. We're also on other social media handles. We're on Facebook 
as Tap TV on Instagram is Tap TV underscore NG and on Twitter is at Tap TV. So connect with us on all of this platform. Till next time, I come your way again. My name is Williams Abuile and this has been the newspaper reviews.